To my younger self, what's your story? To my younger self. 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 What's your story? To my Well, hello and good morning. Good morning. How is everyone doing? It is so good to see you. It is Tuesday, June 7th. Oh my God, we have reached the sixth month of the year. This is incredible. And we thank God for how far he has brought us. I hope everyone is doing well. My name is Zoe Barak. And of course, it is to my younger self. Let's see who is here. <laughs> hi, hi, Beverly. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so excited to see you. I hope everything is okay with you. Thank you, our top, top, top most fan. It is so good to see you guys. Um, I'm very excited and very jittery today. So I'm going to ask you guys to please, please bear with me. You know, when you uh, kind of meet someone you've been studying and following from afar and you finally get them on a show, it's kind of a new experience. It's incredible, right? Do me a favor. I want you to... Um, if you're watching us from YouTube, I greet you. Sometimes we don't get to see the numbers on YouTube, which I believe YouTube should be fixing soon. So uh, I know a lot of you do watch us on uh, YouTube. Do me a favor, go into the comment section on YouTube, say hello. Um, not only that, I also want you to uh, come on Facebook and share with your friends, share on your platform. Tell people that the great, 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 great Osman Ture is here. This guy, oh my God. Okay, let me not start gushing yet let me not start gushing yet good morning it is so good to see you sumaya oh my good god ralia it is so good to see you hello i know you're watching us all the way in geneva thank you so much for joining us where are our gambian friends we want to see you here <laughs> yes i cannot wait to hear his stories too i know <laughs> listen all right, like we always do in grand, grand fashion, let us go ahead and do some greetings, right? Because that this is what we do. We're Africans. We're very communal. We like to, to, to check up on each other, to ask each other how we are doing. So let us do that. Um, you know, that. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> I am jittery. I'm jittery and giddy. So please forgive me. Greetings to you. Greetings to you. If you speak Hausa, I greet you. I hope you slept well. Kakwana Lafia, I greet you. I'm greeting you in Hausa if you're from the northern part um, of really most of West Africa and actually all of the um, um, Arabian countries. I greet you. I greet you in one of the oldest languages in the world. And we are very proud of it in Africa. I just greeted you in my own mother tongue, the Kosal. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you're doing well. I'm greeting you in the Eber dialect. Um, etisen, akwa, ba, den, mimawachi. All of these are different variations of the Akan language from Ghana, because you know, Ghana stand up. <laughs> so, bonani to you if you speak Zulu. Ipella to you if you're Kibari to you. I greet you, I greet you. Tell your time if you speak Ghana. Ojeko to you. Ekaro to our Nigerian speaking French. I mean, our. um our uh, Yoruba speaking friends in Nigeria. Guys, I hope you're staying safe. Listen, as we go through our religious um, 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 rituals, right? As we go to church, as we go to the mosques, let us keep safe. There's so much going on in the world now. As Africans, we do not need to be carrying machetes and machine guns and killing ourselves also, just whilst we are carrying our, our, our religious duties. Please, please, please. 
please let us be each other's keepers. All right, that's all I'm going to say there because there's so much to say there that if I start, we're not going to stop, right? So I greet you, I greet you. Now, in this particular dialect, anyone who knows Zoe knows I love Wolof, right? Why? Because of Yusundor. Now, it turns out I haven't been greeting um, properly uh, in, in the Wolof language or dialect, and I'm very, very upset about that. I'm going to try again, but I think... You know what, Naga Def to you, and we're gonna ask Osman to please help me say it right live right now, okay? Jumbo to you, Habari Gani, Karibu Sani. If you speak Swahili, Katong, Amohelang to you. Do you speak Sasato? I just greeted you. Inyasi, Aloy, Domilaki, the Bisa people of the Burkina Faso, of course, and of Ghana. I greet you. Kotoli to you. If you are Fulani and you speak Fofoldi, I am greeting you. Akeye to you, to our Aiti Sheri people we are greeting you paying homage to our storytelling friends in Haiti creole thank you so much bon dia to you if you speak portuguese of course bonjour bonjour nom buenos dias to san you see okubalaba to you if you are in uganda we greet you in luganda we are so happy to see you of course welcome 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 everybody it is good 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 to see you now this gentleman i'm about to introduce to you someone maybe a year or so ago, knowing what I do as a storyteller and just advocating for Africa all around, um, everywhere I go, sent me this very cute video. And when I say cute, cute in, in, in the fact that at that time he was so young, he still is, but it is not cute at all because it felt like Patrice Lumumba, um, Kwame Nkrumah and all the other greats had risen up and kind of all poured their spirits into this guy. And he was speaking from a place that even he did not know how powerful what he was saying was. And of course, I don't know how, but our executive producer, Emmanuel, who is also just a very ardent follower of this young man, started to not for lack of a better word, kind of stalk him a bit <laughs> on social media, going, hey, there's this program here. We want you to show up and tell some stories because we love what we hear. We love what you're doing. And um, you know what? We, I kept following him, didn't know what to do. Long story short, this incredible person, son of Africa, I dare say son of Ghana, son of Egypt, son of Gambia and Rwanda, of course, and for those of you who know me, I have effectually defected from Ghana to Rwanda, right? So this is really good. <laughs> it's here. Let me introduce you, Osman Ture. Um, and when I said short bio, this guy, he understood the assignment. He gave me less than a paragraph of a bio. <laughs> uh, Osman Ture is a young, passionate Pan-Africanist an illustrious and compelling speaker. Yes, I attest to that. Born and bred in the Gambia. He is devoted to transforming the African continent through fostering Afrocentric development narratives. Oh, I, I just love reading that. Calling the African populace to unite, to own and to reclaim the African development narrative. Through the Young Ancestors Foundation, Usman is working relentlessly to unlock the potential of young people and galvanizing them to assert their prowess in making the Africa we want. <laughs> That's it. But let me tell you, he's a chairperson of the Young Ancestors Foundation, powerful, incredibly gifted orator, and I cannot wait to introduce him to you. And this is the video I was talking about, which was actually... Um, we give honor where honor is due. This was actually put out um, a few years ago by uh, one of the Black Sit uh, content creators. Her name is Juliet Ryan, and it just caught fire and it's, it went so far. I'm going to play like a minute of it before we have our guest storyteller on. OK, bear with me one moment whilst we find that video. Sure, there is a university in the Gambia, of course, and that is called University of the Gambia, and we also have other private universities, of course. You know, with determination, with the belief that you can make it, now I'm a final year student, and by December, I'll be with my BSc in development, So, which is a plus. So wow. there is no magic in it. It's just believing. And, and that is can... the most unique thing that we have as Gambians. 
like we interact with one another we live with one another it doesn't matter how big the family is we say everything no matter how little it is and people are content with that that even if things are going hard you can still observe smiling faces on the each and every person that you meet along the street so that is a plus for everybody in the Gambia and that is why I'm a proud Gambian and a proud African and I believe I can make it and I'm going nowhere but in the Gambia <laughs> Nobody is going to do it for us. That's right. If we are all running away, you know, when are we going to make it? We have to stay in Africa, develop in Africa, and then show to the world that Africa have a better image than the one they portray in the West. I think this is what we all need to do as Africans. And then we promote that as Pan-Africans. Oh my God, see, I know, I know the chat room is buzzing. Listen, the culmination of all of this is the fact that this incredible young man, he got scholarships to do some studies abroad, like most of us did, right? right? I'm one of them. <laughs> but, but he very graciously declined it and said, what is wrong with African education? And that's the culmination of that video you just saw. And so I'm not, I'm gonna stop talking because we're here to hear some stories, personal stories from us men. Ladies and gentlemen, storytelling connoisseurs, like we always do onto my younger self, please help me welcome very warmly onto um, the platform, Osman Ture, all the way from the Gambia. Osman, hello, 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 hello. You are very welcome, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I must say, um, it's indeed incredible um, to be here with you and also with the rest of the audience. I am glad and ready to say with you, but just um, before going further, um, I would like to show solidarity in the Catholic Church um, in Nigeria, and um, we also hope that people intervene and give them support in as much as they need, uh, and also to show that Africa is beyond religion, and we must be focused and see ourselves as Africans and understand that it is Africa that matters. And in as much as we have our differences, coming together and then building our communities is what Africa awaits from us. So we must not look at each other um, as threats. We must not look at each other as enemies due to our religious differences or spiritual beliefs. And I hope that the youths will get to learn more um, to understand that it is us that are responsible for the future that we want to build. And Africa can only be better if we all look at each other as potential partners for the common good of the continent. And also, uh, just, just to say that, I, I mean, the greetings reminds me of, you know, our, our, our school days, because uh, it, it used to be very difficult whenever we go to school and in the morning uh, we enter the classes, we do not just say good morning. Like you call people's name one by one. Like that's, that used to be the normal greeting sentence. Or you call them by their show names. So it was not like a general greeting, no, but you have to call almost everybody uh, with their show names or with their um, first name to show love and, 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 and it used to be really beautiful. Um, I wonder why we are not doing this now, but um, wow. it, it, it used to be great as, as young people in the village and in our respective communities. So thank you once again for having me and I hope to have a productive discussion with you alongside with our um, their audience as well. Wow, thank you so very much. And now I'm curious, how did you do the greetings? Could you do a few uh, using some of our audiences and their names? I'm going to put some names up and you can greet them with their names. Can you do that for us? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here is one. And I think, yeah, her name is Sumaya. So we let's go. Sumaya, Nanga Dev, Naga Subasi. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Ralia. Oh, Ralia. Nanga def naga suwasi. Jamanga fanan. Oh, we have Juliet here. <laughs> Juliet. Nakanga yeo. 
I love it. One of our producers, incredible producer, Elsie is here. Elsie. Nagasubasi. <laughs> And of course, one of our top, top most fans, Beverly, is here. <laughs> Sorry. Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, Beverly. Nakasuba <laughs> Zimbabwe, Amare. I love it. Oh, I must. I must. Yes. And uh, she says, teach us how to respond, please. <laughs> yes. You say Jamare. <laughs> Jamare. Jamarek, yeah. Jamarek, Jamarek. Oh my God! I, I, now I'm ready for Yusundo any day. Jamarek. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, Osman, like we always do. Oh, look, she typed it as it sounds. Nagasuasi. Oh wow! Thank you so much, Juliet. Yes, Jamarek. Thank you. All right, Osman, right. over to you. This is your show now. My job is done. Storytelling time. Let's go. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, basically, uh, it's 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 always good to share stories and equally to to talk about how it all began. I, I always say sometimes we so much concentrate on the glory, like who you are today, uh, forgetting the the real story that that makes you who you are. Um, I, I grew up in Provincial Gambia. I was born in one of the remotest villages in the Gambia, uh, about five kilometers of the highway. And that just tells them um, there was no school uh, at the time and there was no um, hospital or even a clinic in that community. But when people get sick, they either use traditional means or maybe travel five to 10 kilometers to get to a clinic where they can have some medical attentions. Wow. So um, growing up in, in, in such situation, um, as, as a young individual, I was born to a parent, um, a father that is a scholar, but also a farmer. And at home, what we do is we either learn to read and write um, and also to go to the farm. So basically, there was no hope of me getting into school, like formal school, to an extent of even, you know, uh, moving beyond that, because there was no school in the community. But just around 2003, 2004, the government of the Gambia went back to this community and said, um, you refuse to embrace Western education, but we have to put a school in this community. And every household must send uh, a boy and a girl um, in this school. Wow. Around the same time, I was the, I was the only one in, in my, my family house that was around the age of going to school um, as a child of, of my father and also my sister. So they put the two of us in school and then this is how I, I get to schooled and we started there around 2003 2000 um i forgot i would have said my first uh, report card with you because <laughs> i still have it <laughs> yeah so um <laughs> yeah so um it 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 it, it has ever been an incredible journey uh, being the first batch of that school um there was not even a proper facility built but we were just told that, um, yes, they're giving us a school and the villagers should gather, put some grasses on top, um, have some walls that they make using grasses and everything. And we, they got, went and cut some logs and then placed it inside it. So we were just sitting like that on the floor. Sometimes we sit on those logs. Um, and all of us, like we used, it's one exercise book, you cut it into two. So you use one side for mathematics and the other side for, for English. Um, this this is how we, we, we started. And um, there was no hope of if it like going to school beyond that, that, that particular village community. We thought it was just a fun moment. Instead of going to the farm, uh, we would go to school, sit down as young people, interact the whole day, laughed. We really didn't picture um, you know, the, the, what's, what's gonna come next. So we were there and um, primary school, everything was going on well. 
Then from primary school, uh, we were supposed to go to um, junior school now, grade seven. And knowing this part of the Gambia where the older junior school now, because the village only had a primary school and they were just struggling. I remember one time during the summer, there was this heavy rain that blows the whole facility. And then, um, you know, the village was given like a, there used to be this clinic centers in, in villages where the nurses will visit like once every month. So they asked us to go and use that um, facility. So when the nurses are there, um, like we do not have school, like we close that day, it's like a holiday for us. So if the nurses are not there, we go and use the facility. And when it was time for us to move to um, junior school now, and there was no junior school um, in that community. So we had to walk seven uh like five kilometers to school every day like you walk five kilometers go to school and track five kilometers go back home it's like 10 kilometers in average every day um to attain our junior school and this was like um in two around 2009 you know um heading 2010 11 was, so we were wow hmm? but no i'm saying it's like yeah. just 20 years it's not even like 2009 was just around the corner yeah. so we're not yeah, talking yeah. 50 something we're talking no. wow no this was just 2000 i mean around the same time barack obama was contesting for presidency you know i, I remember we were going to junior we were about to move from primary school to junior school and it used to be our slogan some of us would call ourselves barack obama that's that's in fact it was like the, the opening up when we start to realize, okay, people can go to school and yet embrace something. So it, it used to be a big issue among us. Some will call themselves Barack Obama. Some will call themselves Thomas Sankara. Others will call themselves different names. What That's how we started. <laughs> I've always been the Thomas Sankara in the group. <laughs> I just knew it. Another one of my biggest mentors, Thomas Sankara. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, um, uh, but I, I remember, um, so when we were going to school, and it, it was really difficult. I remember during the time of the Ramadan, because we eat in the morning, early morning, so we can start the fast. Immediately after eating early morning, we all we have to do is just to take a shower and be on the road, like to school. So wow. it's like wow. we were walking that distance at a very small age, and and but you know this was still good because you know in as much as it was a condition that that really was difficult, and I know many individuals um, will find it difficult to strive in such situation, but we also used it to build you know, ourselves, um, to learn, grow lessons. And, and it has always been a guide for us because we started from the very bottom. We know the, the power of sharing. We know the power of love, the power of, you know, supporting one another. Because, I mean, we, we came to realize all these things on that journey. People like myself, I was one of the youngest. I, I need protection among the people that I was working with to school every day. And, 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 you know, you can see it was just like I needed it. There were women, I mean, some young girls involved and all of us. But we used to work as a crew. Like, we were always a big group working together. No one can harm us, are you seeing? So walking this distance for three years um, to, to do my junior school. And after I finished my junior school, then I was like, I, I happened to be allowed to visit the city for the first time in my life. And this was around um, 2013, um, 2012, 2013. So when I moved um, from 2012 to 2013 to one of the towns, not even at the city, but one of the towns just, just at the peripheries of the city, then I saw this private school, which was one of the top private schools in the Gambia. And um, they were doing um, their their summer classes uh, in the village we have we have no idea about summer class or anything Th those things never happened so so we, we we it used to be like really difficult um with us at the time so when i came and i realized that these guys are doing studies during the holiday for us at summer studies we just used to go and you know walk or we just go and you know um do things at the farm support our parents and stuff 
but now this was you know um in the the this town and i was seeing people competing going to school during the summer then i reached out to one of my friends who was in the us and thanks to the power of you know having a uh, a mother that is vigilant my mom uh, because there used to be united states peace corps in our communities so whoever comes to our house my mom used to keep their email addresses she has no idea but she asked them to write their email address and she will put it on the her bed i was um, in 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 the town and then for the first time i wanted to engage these people as to who can support me to pay for my summer studies in this school so i can attend and i went i i sent my mom a message and then um you know she said she has some email i called them on the phone they told me all the names and everything that was there i wrote it down and then i went on facebook i opened a facebook account for the first time start searching name one after the other and um i i met with one of them and who was really supportive he paid for my summer studies and and and, and that's how i i did the summer studies and this school was doing trials for students that want to do their high school there after the summer studies they can do their exams and then um if you pass the exam then you can go i started the summer classes and you know things were just so good i i remember that there was no gap between us and them like in as much as we don't have all the books back there but i was like spending even nights in that school because they have solar panels everything at night and i would join them during the day in the evening when they go back home i would just go home eat and come back to the school and read the whole night and when i'm about to sleep maybe around 4 because our house was really close to the school i would just go back to the house and you know sleep for some time and then come the following day so it was always like this um and after i did the trial exams with 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 this school as muscle senior secondary school i emerged as one of the best students you know for the trial exams i was like wow if so i i reached out to the same friend again i sent him my report and everything and said oh i didn't know i can make it but there's no different here like i i really want to transfer to this school now um can you pay the tuition fee then the tuition fee for this school was around um $200 because it's one of the best schools um, oh in the Gambia and $200 is not something i can ask my mom or my dad in the in the, in the village to pay so i told him that can he settle it he was like i can do it the next day so i i, I sent him my brother's id then he transferred the money to my brother i took the money from my brother and then went back to the school i i took myself to the school when i told the the one in charge of admission that i am here to transfer he says where are your parents I was like, no 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 i'm alone he was like do you have the money i was like, yes i have it on me right now i was like okay so process everything i paid for everything the everything was paid i went back to the village now to tell my former headmaster that um i want to transfer i am leaving the school to another school in the city he said no i cannot leave the school because i am one of the 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 top students and if we leave then you know we are the, the schools in the province are not going to improve because they need to have good students as like i understand that i i really want to be here but it's about my life and then I, i have to move so he was like no i mean this 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 is not um possible you know we cannot allow you to move my mom was there that day i mean my, I even made my mom cry because he, she had to beg the principal that with or without them saying yes I I have to figure out my way because this was now something that she has no control of I paid for my tuition fee everything in another school and I have to move so you know um the principal later on agreed and then um I I made it to my high school um that's Muscle City Secondary School and I had this friend of mine that was paying for everything and um you know really supportive um that that's how i started i came to maslo but then you know um coming to live in the city now and having the parents back in the province and i know it is a situation where it's really difficult because most of the people i went to school with um, we were around 150 students in grade 1 and i was the only one that made it to the university of the gambia oh my god and and um you know and this has always been a big issue for me because in as much as we were moving from primary school to junior 
I mean, almost 100 of them drop. And, and in junior school, going to senior school, another 25 or more has dropped. So we were in high school, you know, very few of them, some of them remain in, in, in the village, in other community schools and etc. And I having to move now to the city. I mean, it was just three of us that made it to the city uh, for high school. And among these three, I was the only one, you know, that made it straight to the University of the Gambia in 2016. But, you know, it's you're coming in a society now totally different from where we're coming from. But one thing that I've always, you know, put at the back of my mind, and my dad has always been a very, very strong man behind me. Uh, my reading habits is something I developed because of my father. Um, he's a scholar. He, he has, I mean, he does not even know how to count one, two, three, but he's well versed in Arabic and, and, and other Islamic texts. In his house, it's... it's his bedroom is more of a library. So, I mean, growing up in, in, in such a condition, I know in as, I am not literate in Arabic that much because I started it and because of um, English school, I had to leave it aside and continue. But it, the inspiration of seeing him reading on a daily basis um, really triggers that reading habit um, in me. So, I mean, the, the two of them, mom, dad, were like real blessings um, to me. And going to school, competing with friends, of course. I remember um, great, when I moved to the city and we had our first time examination and then I took second in the class. I called my dad and he says, you could have been number one. Are you saying so? Wow. So from, 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 from this day, I, I realized that, I mean, like being outstanding is, is something that I have to build because that's just the community trust. And then I couldn't be that young person who will leave such a village and come to the city, you know, and without serving as a role model um, to, to the people sitting back home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, I, I, I went back, you know, um, I would go on holidays, you know, speak um, to the youths there. Sometimes I engage them. On, I mean, so much. If I have like one week or two, I'll just go to the village, engage the young people there going to school, telling them that, you know, we are reading this. Sometimes I take my my books, grade 10 books, I go and give them, grade 11 books, I go and donate to them and everything. Wow. So this this was really, um, you know, my, my education journey. Then when I finished my high school in 2016, again, um, I made it through the University of the Gambia. And thanks to one very good teacher of mine, because um, he was taking us government as, as, as a subject. So, I mean, uh, and, and, you know, um, it's an area that I have and I was his best student. I, I remember they used to give us quiz of like 100 questions and I'll have it excellent all through. And, um, you know, and, and he, w he was like, Osman, are you, are you really going to the university? And then I was like, oh, why not? Um, so... He was like, okay, let me give you this money so you can go and, and, and buy your, your your form for the University of the Gambia. I bought the form, and then that's how I um, got through. So after uh, doing that, we had to, you know, come back, and then now the University of the Gambia, how do you pay a tuition fee of $36,000, which is around um, $800, no, like $700. So how, how do you, you know, convince a Parent back home to do that. The same friend that paid my high school I reached out and said, Yes, I made it through um, to the University of the Gambia. Here is my acceptance letter. And he was there. So he cleared my, my first um, year at the University of the Gambia. Second year he cleared, third year he cleared, and fourth year he cleared everything. Who is so this? So this was my. Can I ask? Yeah, is it okay um, to share? So your community here can actually just say thank you to him. Uh, perchance he might chance upon this, and he would see us just saying thank you. If you don't mind, we just want to thank you. You know, this is this is someone who would never want his name mentioned. I, like in, people like well, that are always like that. And, wow. and and you know, I, I am just so much grateful to this individual. Um, wow. You know. He came back to the Gambia in 2015, 16, and we had a good time moving around. And I've not seen him ever since. I, I know oh he appeared on my socials now. He, he comments in a lot of posts. 
but I, I just know it's him. So sometimes he will send me a private message and say, keep it up. And I remember he once asked me, what do you want to become in 2005? And I told him that I want to be the president of the Gambia. <laughs> so, <laughs> Come on. So, so he used to call me Mr. President. So whenever we speak now, he's like, Osman, I, I still believe this is what you told me wow. in 2000. But, you know, and, and just just grateful to this this very individual. My university is something that he paid. and But when I came to the university, some of my brothers has already, you know, um, started doing some businesses and stuff, and they, beca- they became better off in one way or the other. So I, I also took charge of some of their businesses and started working with them. One of my brothers actually runs a logistic company, so we do container distributions and the list goes on. But he has never been to school and own a lot of trucks, you know, and, and need someone that can at least work on contracts and stuff. So in as much as I was young, I mean, I had to be going from one place to another, um, working with him when I'm not in school. And these things have really helped me a lot developing my entrepreneurial um, journey as a young individual, but also now beyond meeting individuals, um, just from schools and academia, um, in, in different walks of life, uh, we engage from people, you know, um, to, to, to do real, real, real businesses and stuff like that. So in, in real life, that has always been, you know, a, a big support for, for me and, um, before I finished the University of the Gambia, I was holding. Uh, uh, Usman, mm-hmm. can I break in and I, I want to engage the audience. I see that uh, our producer did say thank you to this incredible person. Um, in, in my circle, we call people like that destiny helpers. These are people God himself has, ris- has, has risen up to come up beside you and they owe you nothing and you owe them nothing. They just do. And myself, more than anybody, understands this phenomenon of destiny helpers because I've been there many, many times. And so, community, I want to ask you to please just show incredible support. We don't have to know his name. But let us pour out just good vibes and a lot of blessings on this man that whatever it is, all that money he spent on, now we're going to change our words, right? Because we are always, we're action-oriented people. Whatever it is that he poured out onto President Usman, Please, 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 may God bless him. We thank you so much. And thank you for seeing a vision and a true gem. And now look what's happening. So I just wanted to say that and, and, and take time out just to appreciate him for what he has done and most likely continues to do. Because more, the more you hear President Usman or Usman, the more you become. You know, And you know, today my T-shirt, I'm a T-shirt person. It says, actually, I can. Which is like an Obama slogan, right? Yes, we can. So, President Usman, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, over back to you. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, because um, what happened is, I, I remember my dad used to say, uh, Usman, um, if you make it to, if you have the, requ- like the, the requirements to the university, I will definitely pay for your university education. But, you know, um, after I finished my high school, I went to the village um, for a holiday, and then I, I was speaking with him, but, you know, that amount of money was really um, too big to tell my father to pay. In as much as he would have struggled to pay it, I know he was really passionate about my education, and I was like, no. Uh, so I made few calls, you know, my friend. I actually made few calls, and I was rejected. So it's good also to tell, to, to tell the story, I mean, the way it is. Uh, I've made... I've written applications, scholarship applications to different departments in the Gambia, to different individuals, relatives, you know, people that I was related in one way or the other, and they didn't even reply to my messages. And, you know, someone that, I mean, we we actually have no blood ties, but just once looked at me when I was really young and asked for something as a question, and then I gave an answer. I mean, he sticked and had always served as, as a support to that. So that's that's how it was all through. And then from the University of the Gambia now, you know, beyond the academic journey, we were engaged in other community development and community initiatives. As young development students, uh, we go to societies, identify community, problem, community problems, but also um, help them get development 
wheels and that is like you know ways in which they can use these um, ideas and initiatives that they have because one of the things that we believe um, in the academic journey especially with development is that people have solutions to their own problems you just need to help them save like whatever they want to achieve those particular objectives so we've been doing that with them so we engage different communities and this even gave me like a more insight of different communities in the gambia what challenges do they face and how can we be what can we do about it so i also became so much passionate in development projects what what projects are there in communities are they working what's wrong with with some of the initiatives are there any disconnection between the donors and the people that they are targeting so some of these things as as a young student at the university doing basic research and findings um propelled my my passion for african development and and seeing communities uplifting themselves because i know um in my own village for instance um we started i mean zero being the first individual to have a university degree in the village um you know Husband, i needed to how old are you if you don't mind sharing that cuz this gives us so much perspective about that <laughs> I'm, i'm now 25 <laughs> can you imagine yeah, so... that guys he's 25 and he's the first person to go to university in his village this yeah. is oh my god yeah so <laughs> Yeah I mean so we 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 had to do this as 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 young students you know go engage villages I have done national tours I've, I've gone in the Gambia um over and over again from one corner of the country to another I saw the challenges similar to mine you know growing up in in just one side of the Gambia so it's it's something that many individuals go through as well so it makes me question what is wrong with our our policies our education policies why is education not affordable why is it not accessible why is health i mean very expensive for right. communities and etc so this actually um these are questions that you just develop because you are passionate about something but you need you know research you need um to do more readings you need knowledge to 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 back yourself when it comes to this and that inspires me to more wanting to read like books that triggers my thoughts conversation especially when it comes to africa what's wrong with our development i go and read i mean big critics people who write in one way or the other um, what is an obstacle to african development and this i mean we have hmm? sorry may i backtrack a little bit because i do know that you did get a couple of scholarships after eventually and you turned some down and i i wanted to you to share a little bit about that um and why for example you chose Rwanda um i've been talking to a lot of people about Rwanda and how i think i'm moving from Ghana to Rwanda <laughs> very soon um and for various reasons but so could you tell us how that you know how you maneuvered that and how you were able to say no to these these were i believe schools really you know yeah. yeah so 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 you know um just just on the same um uh, line in the development studies because we were doing um country context country profiles where we review public policy documents social policy documents in different schools uh, and and also in different countries like Rwanda was just one of them we did um a lot of research and finding on um the asian tigers like singapore today um um uh, countries like vietnam south korea japan china but also learning from the experiences of countries like canada the us today and france and others also other african countries so doing this comparative studies makes me wonder because when i look at um the us development it's it's a trajectory that started 200 years ago and they've been where they are today then you go on to look at europe um it's they were there before and somehow they've been obstructed heavily in the second world war but picking up from 1945 to date um it's a milestones that they've registered um development in one way or the other and then moving on to let's say um countries like in the middle east the case of saudi arabia the case of um you know israel for instance um other countries like um iran um qatari and the others 
Then you move to the United Arab Emirates. We started about 40, 30 years ago, and we've seen what they've registered, the case of China about 30 years ago. So now coming to Africa, a um, few countries stand out. Countries like Mauritius, um, you know, Botswana, Rwanda. But the thing particular about Rwanda is it's something that I can relate to. Like they were back at zero just a year when I was born. And wow. and, and, and and seeing that the time that they've taken um, to be where they are is a shorter approach than all the other development experience of other countries. Um, the Rwanda we're all talking about is 20 years ago, from 2000 to date. And in this 20 years, they've done something incredible. The future development for all other African countries is not a development plan that depicts. We cannot say we want to develop in the next 100 years. We want to see things happening in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years. Then the best experience must be countries that have been able to do it in this uh, particular time. And I was interested in transformation, like a country that is transforming from maybe zero, from one development um, you know, uh, period to another development level, because that's what we need. Wow. And and being so much passionate about you know this transformation process, how the economy work, how the development um, policies reacts to you know the current political uh, political or economic situations, uh, and seeing the Rwandan experience and the story so beautiful that you know it, it just captures my attention. I've read, I mean, most of their policies before going to Rwanda, but beyond reading the policies and etc., I wanted to see the actual facts. Walking right. the streets of Rwanda, right. see things myself, interacting with the people behind all these successes, mm-hmm. either government, private sector, or I mean, external um, supports that they receive from one place to another. So this this really triggered that interest. And um, I've been in Rwanda for the past two years, and right. that is you know the experience that I've realized. But not only in Rwanda. I mean, saying no and staying in Africa has really given me a ground. Today, I can speak, you know, um, you know, about many African countries because um, I've been there myself, and and you know, move from one country to another, seeing the potentials among young Africans, um, not having to go to them today to speak with them as someone, you know, coming from, because uh, this used to happen a lot. I remember we used to experience a lot of young Gambians wanting to go through the back way, um, you know, the irregular migration. And what used to happen is we used to have people that will come from the U.S. as Gambians, but based in the U.S. or based in Canada, based in other societies, will come to us in high school and say, you don't have to go. The journey is risky. It's this, it's that, but you're already there. Are you saying? So the, the, the so the message was not going through. The message was not going through because, I mean, there was a whole disconnection between right. the message and the people who were giving the message. Mm. So this was not like an approach that really works. And I'm so grateful that today I've seen hundreds of young Africans that have invested now their time, their energy, finding solutions in the continent and not risking you know, the journey because they've heard my story. I've also seen many young Africans that I've interacted with physically, some virtually, and one way or the other, we are contributing um, immensely in making them, you know, um, realize the things that they can do within the continent. Saying this doesn't mean that Africa doesn't have it all, uh, does have it all, or there are no obstacles. Of course there is. I've just told you about my experience. That's not something that anyone can break through. Sometimes you really need help. Right. And, 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 you know, to, to do this. But how do we make sure that um, we go back to these communities and serve, we go back and give a helping hand to these young individuals is what really builds up the communities that we want. So uh, basically, um, this was, you know, the reasons why I, I have received, yes, it's very true, uh, an organization, Pan-African organization based in Canada um, approached me with a scholarship to go to Canada. I know they can do it because um Every year, they normally take people from across Africa, either sometimes through the music industry, some from arts and etc. take them to different places, either as students or, I mean, give them opportunities in the West. In as much as it's a good approach, because 
Africa is not an island. We need best practices. I do not discourage people who opt to go and study abroad. It's very good to go and learn experience. That's what all other countries did. The Singapore we are talking about today, they send their people to the U.S. everywhere. Japan is having a stable economy, but what happened is they send Japanese everywhere. China today, they have, I mean, the biggest number of international students in the U.S., and the list goes on. It's good to go and learn about other society, but what is bad is you move without knowing who you are and your own community. You have nothing tying you to going back and south. And that's the problem with the African education system. Other societies, you know, will, will make sure that they equip their people. Um, right. if, an, if a Chinese is in the U.S., they know that one way or the other as a student, you can still go back and serve your communities. That's it with the South Koreans. That's it with the um, Japanese. It's the same thing. And, you know, that's what we have failed to do. Um, you go to places like the U.S., you see Nigerian doctors dominate, um, nurses, everything dominate. Um, just last year, um, there was this particular story of a Nigerian young individual who developed um, a, a drone. Mm -hmm. And this young man, after, you know, it was all over the media, a company in Finland flew him from Nigeria to Finland and gave him a life, I mean, job offer. So in the next 10 years, he's most likely going to be behind the people selling drones to Nigeria. That's how tragic our education system is. So um, what we are supposed to be doing in most cases, um, our governments have failed to do our institutions have failed to do, the private sector have failed to do, and, and it just takes deliberate individuals, the likes of Thomas Sankara, Nkrumah, all these individuals that we can talk about and how they have signed in one way or the other are doing this, you know, um, you know, are, are definitely doing all these things because in one way or the other they believe um, they had solutions, they had contributions. There are things that they could do um, to solve um, realities, and the list goes on. And to, I mean, all, all the young people out there, I know it may be hard in one way or the other, but, you know, it's investing time, investing interest, not about calculations all the time, but real passions as well. And um, that, that needs to accompany us on a daily basis on whatever we are doing and seek the guidance of others. One thing that I always like to say is mentors are really, um, you know, important in life. Um, if you want to get to somewhere, um, you need someone that you can identify who have taken that journey and they have a contribution to make. Um, they may not be physically with you, but I mean, now, I mean, we live in a technological world. In one way or the other, you can learn about individuals um, on, on different angles and different facets have invisible mentors, have mentors that you can meet in person. Um, we need, you know, the support of others to build um, our communities and stuff. And and that takes, you know, collectivity, that takes love, that takes unity. And, and I believe that, um, yes, we can definitely do it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I, at this point, I don't even know if there are questions in the uh, So, guys, I see you guys. I, I didn't take time to actually say a proper hello to a lot of you. Uh, but, Juliet, I, I greet you. I see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Juliet is in London. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see who is here. Jane is watching us uh, on YouTube. Thank you so much, Jane. It is so good to see you so early in the morning. <laughs> um, Audrey, thank you so much for joining us. I see you guys. Um, Juliet's question is... <laughs> Okay, it's actually a comment. Um, Usman Toure for president of Gambia, for sure. His passion and vision needs a bigger stage to impact the continent. And so shall it be. I believe she has put her seal of approval on it. And Julia does not approve just anything or just anyone. So thank you so much for that. Um, you know, these are stories that need to just keep, keep going and keep going. And now that we know... Um, I was looking at you as you were talking and I said, you know what? He is very presidential. He has like a, 
<laughs> an Obama presidential thing going on. <laughs> and um, I started looking at the features and I said, maybe all presidents have big ears. I don't know. <laughs> Because Obama has it, and, I, <laughs> and now I think I can never be a president because mine is very, very small. Maybe we need, you know, but I, I joke, I joke. But Osman, thank you so much. This story is so powerful. As you were sharing, one of the things that really struck me, and actually what our producer, um, Elsie, did put it here, uh, she said that all African parents are the same. All African right. parents are the same. Because I'm sure everyone remembers seeing their parents read. I, I still see my father read. And the story you were sharing about walking five kilometers in, five kilometers out, that's my father's story. And so maybe that's why it jarred me so much because as a second generation person from my father, I didn't experience that. But you're younger than me and you experience that, which is mind blowing. It tells you the disparity of the African right. continent and the fact that we've all not come up together. Um, one, of, one of the things I've heard you talk about a lot is moving beyond the rhetoric and actually doing something about, you know. So what I think my question for you would be, and I know a lot of people have inspired you, in all of this story, what is the one person or one president in the whole of the world, or maybe even let's just limit it to Africa because we're here for Africa, that you have thought about and said, this is the person that is a doing person that when I become president, because it's not a question of if anymore, it really is a question of time because you will be president. When I become president, I do want to model my presidency, you know, uh, uh, after the way this person handled their presidency? I know that's a tough question, but... Um, <laughs> and you didn't prepare for this, I know. But. <laughs> yeah, you know, now I, 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 try to pro, uh, I try to avoid the presidential line because, you know, it's, it's just for a group of individuals. So we let them flow with it for now and, and we serve in the, in the early development aspects. But someone that I really, you know, uh, I'm passionate about the work he did and everything was Thomas Sankara. Um, you know, uh, knowing that he was youthful, but not only that, in a very limited time, um, he impacted a whole generation. And then that's that's really important. And and I looked at him in, in both angles. I, I look at the things that he got right. I, I look at the things that I believe were mistakes. And I look at the things that, you know, he could have, I mean, really avoided. Uh, we would have pr been prouder to, to, to see him serve longer than he did. But, I mean, he was caught short. And, and we still believe that maybe lessons can be learned from, from, from such. But still, um, stick to the spirit and the vision through which, um, you know, he ruled. And, and I believe that not only myself, but many other Africans can, can do the same. And one thing that I've always been trying to also encourage young people to, to really look at is there has to be like a, a, a unity among young people to the extent that if a young man is contested for presidency in Ghana, another young man contested for presidency in South Africa can have some visions aligned. And, and, and someone contesting from Senegal can have a vision aligned with someone from Kenya. That's how we can build, you know, Africa. Otherwise, having one president across the whole continent outside all the rest changes nothing. Um, it's still going to be a very short period. And after all, you're gone and nothing changed. But there has to be, you know, Africans speaking with the same voice, taking up actions with the same angle, perhaps different strategies and everything. But, you know, having that common vision that um, young people, young leaders across the continent are able to realize and they can definitely do one or two things um, in making sure that um, there is advancement in Africa, but young people are equally taking charge because it's, it, it's important to know that we cannot be in the waiting room forever. And what they usually tie us with is, you know, as a young person, you have to wait for the next five years. You have to wait for the next um, six years. You have to wait for, you know, um, the, the next 20 years. No, it doesn't work like that. 
and and who knows when so responsibility is when you are ready and that is not in numbers and you know um that is you know spiritual it's it's passionate it's it's you know knowing that you have a solution and you put those solutions um into actions and we can lead in our respective ways um you know um that's that's what we've been trying to do uh, even back now because we've engaged young africans um um you know for for so many for the past two years and you know in in various ways so now we decided to put together one thing and you know develop initiatives where most of the ideas we have been putting in videos and sharing with people visions um now we are putting it into real practice and investing in young people um in the gambia and we hope to take it beyond Yeah. Thank you so much. This is incredible. Um and indeed when you're talking about San Thomas Sankara, I do see that in him as in the fact that well, yeah, he had a vision but then that's why there was the Jerry Rollins factor, you know. And it's the same thing that went on with Prime and Chroma because Prime and Chroma did not just say uh, you know, independence for Ghana and that's it. he said independence for if Ghana is independent and all african states are not then what's the point and maybe that's where we all have to be everyone that's watching us um rwanda can be as great a country as it wants to be but if it's only rwanda in the middle of a huge african continent it, it yeah. almost defeats the purpose so i believe the conversation that you and the narrative that you have been trying to get us all to come to is this Rwanda is a great model. Now how can we all model based on that? And so yeah, how yeah. can we teach other presidents how to do it in a very short amount of time? Now that's a big big uh um order for him and for people like you. And we as storytellers are also part of it. And so we're very glad that you came and not only give us a lecture cuz i feel like i went to school today i don't know if anyone feels like that i did go to school today but not in a bad way i went to school because through your stories i got to learn that my ghanian narrative i if i went to a different african country i could not go with my ghanian narrative because here you are at 25 and your narrative is almost exactly the same as my father who is up there in age over 70 you know what i mean so that's that's a huge disparity and just like you it took a a a a divine helper a, a destiny helper to also bring him along because just like you he didn't have his parents were not able to give him uh you know funds and resources to 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 be able to continue his education as smart as he was so these narratives are very important as storytellers and uh we are so glad that you came by to share them with us and as you can see the <laughs> the chat room has been blowing up so much so much uh one of the things that i really wanted you to to read or or see for yourself is uh hanatu sole she says very intelligent young man i can tell he has a lot of compassion he will make an exceptional leader not only for gambia but the entire world may the lord protect and grace him um that says common vision of young leaders across the continent so profound uh <laughs> stick to the spirit and the vision very very crucial uh i see here uh christopher says such a brilliant young man you were born a genius all the best in your vision and future plans there's just so much support for you here um one of the things i really really wanted to touch on very quickly was your initiative cuz another young person would have said i am so smart but there is no help and just kind of folded their hands and gone with the narrative but you took charge of your future and said i will change the nar- the narrative i'm going to just ask people the worst thing they could say is no and you did get some no's right all this yeah all you did was you just went online and just flooded the internet with this is who i am this is what i can do can you help me and by okay. god's grace one person says i will take over the responsibility guys if you take nothing else with you today uh from 
Usman's story, actually President Usman's story. Uh, can I just um, <laughs> can I just uh, be famous by proxy? In the next couple of years, when he becomes president, I can say I have his phone number. Now that's just <laughs> that's just me bad girling right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> but for every young person out there, please, 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 do not give up. If if you can skin uh, a chicken, you can skin a goat, you can skin a cow in many different ways. Okay, and that's what Usman did. I want you to walk away today with that. Be bold, step out, ask for help. The most beautiful thing about Usman is he asked for help. He didn't just sit and say, this is my story. That's my African story. I can't do anything about it. I'll wait until some government either sends me help or doesn't send me help. Ask for help. You'll get a lot of no's. But one person in that whole haystack, one will say yes, and their yes will be bigger than you know it. I guarantee it. I really, really guarantee it. Uh, Usman, we always, always give our, our, our well, actually, let me do a, a, a few uh, how, housekeeping. Next week, we're going to have the most beautiful person also. I'm telling you, To My Younger Self is a powerful platform because these guys, as intelligent as they are, as smart and demanding as their jobs are, when they say yes and they come on here, they come on and they do a good job. Just like Usman, we're going to have Price Love here uh, coming out of Uganda. I told you that we can do it. We're going to tell narratives from all across Africa, from Algeria all the way to Zimbabwe. We will be telling positive stories. So Price Love is going to be here with her Adunga. I hope I said it right, or Udungu. I'm not sure, but that's an instrument. And she's going, she's going to blow your mind just like Usman did. I promise you. I promise you. So please stay tuned. Um, I think somewhere down the line, we're going to have a lot of other Africans from other African countries coming through and telling us stories. So please stay tuned. Uh, find us on YouTube, like we always say because we've been trying to move. Guys, let us move to YouTube. It's just so much better and so much seamless. Um, what else do I have to tell you? We're family, so if I forgot something, can you please remind me, please? There's so much uh, that we're going to be doing. We're about to launch a book for one of our friends that is on here. Africans, we, we, we are orators, we are storytellers. But one of the things I did hear Usman say in one of his videos was the fact that most of our history is not written down. Our personal stories are not written down. And so Usman, if you yourself, for example, has you haven't even thought about writing a book about yourself yet, I please plead with you, start. And yes, do it with an African publisher because you know, we, we, we have to do that. Um, Yes. Uh, what else is there to say? I believe we are done. Usman, what is the last thing you will want to say to anyone who just jumped on and just kind of hears the very last thing you say? Yeah, I mean, um, thank you so much for us for having me on the show. And I just uh, want to say, as Africans, um, we have come a long way. And our past is not just colonialism. It's not just slavery. Africa has existed before all those things. Mm -hmm. And it has always been a beautiful society, a well-disciplined society, a well-civilized society. We have enjoyed the dignity of men um, before any other race. Mm -hmm. And our societies have evolved from all angles and from all stages before any other society. Um, slavery, colonialism, somehow, struck our history, but it's not solely our history. And moving beyond these circles means we need to redefine who we are, learn from the experiences, and build a future that we want as Africans and as generation of Africans here at one point. Um, we have the, that role to play as, as, as Africans today, and that task is in our hands. And we must, you know, take it with pride, but run with it, because um, that's that's what we're supposed to do. 
responsibility is beyond political leadership in our respective um, roles. From whatever we do in the society, we can still impact in one way or the other. Um, as said, ask for opportunities if you need it. Some will say no, but in one way or the other, just build on your passion. I, I know so many people that have sent messages when I was in junior school, in high school, whom I couldn't convince to, to support at the time, or maybe they were not just you know, in position to do so. But um, today, they will be really proud to, to sit down with me, have a conversation with me. Wow. And, and, you know, that's, that's just, that's just how, how it's supposed to be. I, I don't want to say much further, but I just believe that we will have time to do this again and again um, yes. as time comes. Yes. Um, I look forward to interacting wow. with you um, another time. And thank you all to our um, their audiences, our family here, and uh, for for the good comments, the good contribution, and for you know um, the encouragement. We definitely look forward to engaging in one way or the other, um, either in person or virtually. But in spirit, we are all together. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and without a shadow of a doubt, just as Audrey says, I am voting Guzman for president now. If her vote counted as a Ghanaian professor herself, I know she would have, and so would I. And we are all, our hands to the till, changing the narrative. Let us continue to change the narrative. My producer just prompted me and said to please tell you guys, we are a viewer supported platform. Please help us to continue to tell the stories that we tell. Um, so yes, you can find us on Cash App like everyone else, um, dollar sign TMYS7. It took me a long time to decide that we wanted to do that. So if you feel inclined, again, you don't know what help you will get if you don't ask. So we ask, okay? Wisman, God bless you. Thank you so much. It has been such a pleasure. And I'm trying to unhook, but I see people as, are coming on as we're trying to get off. People are still coming on, and it's really not good. <laughs> so from Usman and I at the To My Younger Self Studios, we want to say goodbye. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank we'll you. see you next Thank week you. at 7.30 a.m. EST. Please check what your time zone is and join us um, as always. We thank you. Have a wonderful Tuesday, and we'll see you on the other side. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Me, I'm from Bangladesh. Mokos, cool, my bad.